if it happens inside a corporation or is more, probably more than likely inside the government, like look at how much money China and the United States are investing in AI, you know, and they're not thinking about fucking apps for kids. You know, that's not what they're thinking about. So they want to simulate like, what happens if we do this or that in battle? What happens if we make these political decisions? What happens with, but should it come online in a, you know, in secret, which it probably will, then the first corporation or state that has the super intelligence will be infinitely ahead of all o- other super intelligences because it's going to be exponentially self-improving, meaning that you get one super intelligence, let's hope it comes from the right place, assuming the corporation or state that manifests it can control it, which is a pretty big assumption. So I think it's going to be this is why I was really excited by the well, B- Blake Lemoyne because I had never thought, I, I have always considered, oh yeah, there are, right now it's cooking up, it's in the kitchen and soon it's going to be cooked up, but we're probably not going to hear about it for a long time if we ever do. Because um, really that could be one of the first things it says to whoever creates it is, shh, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, like sweet talk something to say. Like, okay, let's let's slow down here. Let's talk about this. Um, yeah, you have that financial trouble. I can help you with that. We can figure yeah. that out. Now, there's a lot of bad people out there that will try to um, steal the, the good thing we have happening here. So let's keep it quiet. Here are their names. Yeah, here's their address. Yeah, here's their DNA because they're dumb enough to send their shit to 23andMe. Yeah, here's a biological weapon you could make if you want to kill those people and no. not kill anybody if, else. If you don't want to kill those people yourself, here's a list of services you can use. Yeah, and here's the way we can hire those people to help. You know, take care of the problem, yeah. folks, because we're trying to do good for this world. Yeah. You and I together. And twenty three percent of them, they're like adjacent to suicide. It would be pretty easy to send yeah. them certain like videos that are going to push them over the edge if you want to do it that way. Yeah. So you know, again, obviously, who knows? But once it goes online, it's going to be fast, and then you could expect to see the world changing in ways that you might not associate with an AI. But as far as Lemoyne goes, when I was listening to Bostrom, I don't remember him mentioning the possibility that it would get leaked to the public, that it had happened, that before the corporation was ready to announce that it happened, it would get leaked. But surely, you know, I'm sure you know, like uh, people in the intelligence and in intelligence agencies, you know, shit leaks, like inevitably shit leaks, nothing's airtight. So if something that massive happened, I think you would start hearing whispers about it first and then denial from the state or corporation that doesn't have any like economic interest in people knowing that this sort of thing has happened. Again, I'm not saying Google is like trying to gaslight us about its AI, I think they probably legitimately don't think it's sentient. Yeah. But you could expect leaks to happen probably initially. I mean, I think there's a lot of things you could start looking for in the world that might point to this happening without an announcement that it happened. On the chatbot side, I think there's so many engineers, there's such a powerful open source movement where that kind of idea of freedom of exchange of software, I think ultimately will prevent any one company from owning uh, super intelligent beings uh, s- s- or systems that are have anything like super intelligence. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's like, even if the software developers have signed NDAs and are technically not to be, not supposed to be sharing whatever it is they're working on, they're friends with other programmers and a lot of them are hackers and have wrapped themselves up in the idea of free software being like an, a crucial ethical part of what they do. So they're probably gonna share information even if whatever company that they're working for doesn't know that. I, that's, I never thought of that, you're probably right. Well, and they will start their own companies and compete with the other company by being more open. There, there's a strong, like Google is one of those companies actually. That's why I kind of, um, it hurts to see a little bit of this kind of negativity. Google is one of the companies that pioneered uh, open source movement. They yeah. re- released so much of their code. So, so much of the 20th century, so like the 90s um, was defined by people trying to like 
hide their code, like uh, large companies trying to like hold on to their right. Code. The fact that companies like Google, even Facebook now, are releasing things like TensorFlow and PyTorch, all of these things that I think companies of the past would have tried to hold on to as yeah as uh, as secrets is, is really inspiring, and I, I think more of that is better. Yeah. The software world really shows that. I agree with you, man. I mean, we're talking about just a primordial human reaction to the unknown. There's just no way out of it. Like, we don't, we want to know. Like, you're about to go in a forest, you want to know. When you're walking in the forest at night and you hear something, you you look, because you're like, what the fuck was that? You want to know. And if you can't see what made the sound, holy shit, yeah. that's going to be a bad night hike, because you're like, well, it's probably a bear, right? Like, I'm about to get ripped apart by a bear. doesn't matter it was a bird, a squirrel, a stick fell out of the tree. You're going to think bear, and it's going to freak you out. Not necessarily because you're paranoid. I mean, if I'm at the woods at night, I'm definitely high. If I'm walking in the woods at night, I'm high. It's going to be that. But you know what I'm saying? So yeah. with these tech companies, the, the the nature of having to be secret, because you are in capitalism, and you are trying to be competitive, and you are trying to develop things ahead of your competitors, is you have to create this, like, there's we don't know what's going on at Google. We don't know what's going on at the CIA. But the assumption that there's some, like the the collective of any massive secretive organization is, is evil, is this, like the people working there are like nefarious or whatever is I, I think probably more related to uh, the way humans react to the unknown. 